This year I did at least 17 videos on mini PCs, even more if you count the ones that were on sale and I was doing like roundup videos. I was talking to my contact over at Geekom and she said, are you going to be doing like a video covering your favorite mini PCs of the year? And I said, you know what? Yes, but they're not all going to be Geekom. <laughs> what I'm going to do right now is talk about the five best mini PCs. So I got a little question to get the conversation started here and also help the algorithm. So you're here looking at mini PCs. Why do you need a mini PC? What are you going to be doing with it? What are your plans for the mini PC? And then at the end, you can let me know which one you thought was the best. And let's start off with the big one. So when I started looking at all the numbers, I think I know why the Geekom rep asked, are you going to be doing this video? Because this one came out on top in almost every category and it surprised me because this is an intel this is a new intel it's the geekcom gt1 mega and it features the new ultra 9 processor we've got 16 cores 22 threads six of those are performance cores and eight are efficiency cores now when it comes to the overall performance and you can see here this is the one and it wins in a lot of the different categories right here when it comes to gaming it's a bit of a different story it's kind of a mixed bag it wins in a couple of the categories but not in all of the categories so again i was kind of surprised at how fast this intel is and with the number of cores that it has it also makes it the best when it comes to doing like virtual machines and all that now some of the cores are efficiency cores but systems like proxmox have no problem dealing with efficiency cores versus the performance cores it can just use them all and basically every single thread becomes a core so you're going to have 22 threads of power to play with when it comes to virtual machines and virtualization in linux but just running stuff in windows we're talking easy 4k editing even doing some game development if you wanted to you could do 3d design uh, there's a lot of stuff that you can do with this. The GT1 Mega also has, they say, the all new Intel Arc graphics card. Uh, it's an integrated graphics card. It's like the Iris Xe, but a little bit faster. It's 2.35 gigahertz, and it's got eight of the Xe cores. It does support hardware ray tracing, and there's also an AI chip on the inside, so you can do your AI stuff if that's something you care about. Some of these have it, some of these don't. It's not something I even think about, and I don't think it really sells stuff, but tell me if I'm right or wrong. Now, when it comes to the heat, it did get hotter than any other unit in this category. Category, it wasn't my hottest unit, believe it or not. Some of these Intels get very hot. And while it did hit 101 degrees Celsius, that's under the T-junction max, it did not run it that all the time. Like when you first start your benchmark, it shoots up to 101 and then comes right back down and kind of hovers at 74. Now, the other thing about it is it's also one of the only units that I've tested that has all the modern fixings. We're talking Wi-Fi 7, Bluetooth 5.4. Pretty much everything I'm testing has 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. We don't just have one Ethernet port on the back. We have two and they're both 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. You can hook up four monitors to this because on the back we have two USB 4, which can also be Thunderbolt and you can daisy chain monitors if you wanted to with that. And then below that, we have two HDMI. So you can run all kinds of monitors. You can do 8K, 4K, whatever you want. Since this is Intel, it wins in just about every category, but it's a tiny bit more expensive than a lot of the other ones on the list. You know, maybe this is overkill for you, maybe not. It also comes with DDR5 5600 megahertz memory. So it's just a loaded little system. If you don't need the crazy speed for gaming or whatever, and you want to run like lots of virtual machines, it might be a better idea to get the Ultra 7 155 model because it still has 22 threads, the same amount of cores and everything, uh, same amount of cache. It just runs at 4.8 gigahertz as far as the max turbo, whereas this one runs at 5.1 with the max turbo. This is the one that pretty much won when it comes to pure productivity, but there were some systems that were better when it comes to gaming, and those are the AMD based systems. So let's take a look at some of those. Ryzen had a new line of CPUs that came out this year, the 80 whatever models. Uh, I've got a few 8945HS models, but they were not really faster than the 7940HS that I've tested before. And they even struggled against the 7840HS. I mean, they, I mean, they were a little bit faster, but not enough to justify the price. Just getting the Ryzen 7940HS is probably the way to go for a lot of people. And I found a couple that are insanely good. The fastest that I tested when it comes to gaming was the Rioton Alloy 9. They haven't made a lot of mini PCs. It comes in a case that looks exactly like the case that you see with the Geekom GT1 and also the Geekom A7. What I'm going to say when it comes to like if you want the best gaming performance but also something that has really good overall performance, look at these two units because they're almost identical. The Rioton Alloy 9 is a couple frames per second faster in most games. So take a look at these two because they both have the same 
same parts under the hood. They both have 2.5 gigabit ethernet. They're very similar parts. And just look at the scores right here. They're almost identical. The Rioton Alloy 9 is, it's, and look, the Geekom is faster in Valley. But then when you look at the actual gaming performance, the Rioton Alloy 9 is a tiny bit faster, but this is all so negligible. So what I'm gonna say when it comes to like the best gaming performance, these AMDs with the 7940HS are amazing. And these two systems are so similar that I would look and see which one is the better price at the moment. And the reason I'm mentioning the Rioton Alloy 9 is because it's a little lower in price. If you see a Black Friday sale where the Geekom A7 goes on sale, then that's the one to get. These two, like I said, almost identical. I really like them both. And then we have this one, the Minis Forum UM890, which is another gaming beast, but it's quite a bit more expensive because it has that new AMD. But take a look at the benchmarks. It's so similar when you look at like the benchmarks and it's not faster. The only reason you go for the Minis Forum UM890 is if you like that dark aesthetic. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, you get the 890 because it has Oculink. So if you want to be able to run an external graphics card dock that uses Oculink and not USB 4, then you're going to need to get the UM890. But when it comes to that, I'm not really sold on the whole graphics card dock things because I don't, when I have one of mini PC, I want something like this. That's it. I, and we're done. I don't need, I really don't like having things dongling everywhere, dingling and dongling. And I don't like hooking up all kinds of external devices. I don't really think I want a graphics card dock. I just want a faster computer overall. It's up to you. If you want a graphics card dock, Minis Form UM890. If you don't, and you want the best gaming experience, well, Geekom A7 and the Rioton Alloy 9. Just check these two out. Now, the Geekom A7, I want to tell you a quick story about this one. I was holding onto that one and I wanted to do something with it. And then my dad messaged and he was like, hey, um, having a little trouble. He plays piano and, and does music and everything, kind of like I do. And he's like, my computer just can't handle all the stuff I want to do with my music. And so I was like, you know what? This is going to be a huge upgrade. And I sent him the Geekom A7. And then he hooked it all up and tested it. And he sent me a message and said, son, when I said send me a computer, I didn't mean send me something this nice. <laughs> I thought that was kind of funny. He was like, this is too nice. Like, Hold on. How is it so small? So he, he didn't know how far we've come when it comes to mini PCs. He still had a big computer. And this is way faster than the big computer that he had doing his music. So I'm glad that I was able to hook him up with the Geekom A7. I kind of miss it because it was awesome, but it is what it is. Next up, I want to talk about a lower cost option that features the Ryzen 7 7840HS. And that's a unit called the Trig Key S7. So the Trig Key S7 is very similar to these, except it features the Ryzen 7 7840HS, which means you're saving a little bit of money. Um, just grab the prices here from the time of you know making the video on Amazon. And as you can see, when it comes to the benchmarks, it's a little bit slower, but not that much slower. And Cyberpunk, the, the medium settings, about the same. So when you're playing Cyberpunk, you won't notice much. But in other benchmarks, it does fall behind quite a bit, like single single core scores, OpenCL scores are a little bit lower. Not too awful much lower, but yeah, the multi-core scores and everything a little bit lower. And then Cinebench is a little, it's just like a little bit lower. You like shave a little bit of performance off when it comes to that. But gaming is very similar with the 7840HS because it still has the Radeon 780M under the hood. This one also has a smaller M.2. So you're just, just cutting every corner to make sure that the price is low. But if you're okay with that and you just want, you know, pure gaming performance and a few other things and a decent computer, the Tree Key S7 is a good way to go. Now, last, I want to talk about something that is a bit unique on this list. So this is my choice if you want just networking craziness. You want to run some servers, you want to run some VMs, well, then you're going to need the Minis Forum MS01. Now, this one's interesting because it features an older Intel Core i9-13900H. It's not the Core Ultra stuff. It's got 32 gigabytes of RAM and it comes with Windows 11 Home. I don't know why it even came with an OS. You're probably just going to wipe that because what's special about this one is just the options that you get. You have several options under the hood for installing more M.2. You could put two or three of those in there. I think it's three. And then you have PCI Express on this. It's a small PCI Express slot, so you can put something in there. What do you want to put in there? That is completely up to you, but this thing is designed for networking. So I would imagine, I don't know, you could put more M.2 or you could put a SAS card or something. On the back, this is where it gets kind of wild. You have two 10 gig SPF Plus ports, and that also supports link aggregation. Beside that, you have two more RJ45 ports, and those are 2.5 gigabit ethernet. And above and beyond that, we have two USB 4 ports, 
and those can do Thunderbolt 20 gigabits per second Ethernet. This is what you need if you want to like run a little home server. Now here's the thing. I find that the way I have everything set up, I don't need all those options. And this CPU is fast, but it is not as fast as this. So the way I'm running my server at home, I've got Proxmox up and running. I've got 2M.2 .2 on the inside and that's it. I don't really use all the bells and whistles. I'm using this one for my home server, but I'm not using all the bells and whistles. I would be just fine with this one. And you could run Proxmox on here and it would actually be a little bit faster, not much, but a little bit faster because the Core Ultra in here is faster than the 13900H. But you can see here in the Geekbench, you know, it's it's a little bit behind in the single core and a little bit behind in the multi-core. Not too much, but you know, a little bit. It's, it is an i9. So when it comes to the OpenCL score, well, of course the Mega is gonna just destroy it because it has an Intel Arc, whereas this just has like, I think an Iris or something, I don't know, something, not even an Iris XE, just like not that good of a GPU. Then when it comes to Cinebench, you can see, again, the multi-core score on the Mega is quite a bit better. So here's the deal. Figure out what you need. If you need all that networking stuff, do you need that much prowess in the networking room? Do you? If not, you know, one of these will work just fine when it comes to running Proxmox. Also, the Ryzen's will do a good job. All these will be really good machines when it comes to that. But, you know, there's one that is on top, and that's, that's this one when it comes to pure performance. Not so much gaming, but just pure overall performance. I can't believe I'm holding an Intel. I didn't expect to be holding an Intel, but these Core Ultra mini PCs have finally gotten faster than the Ryzen 9s. So maybe Ryzen will have to like figure something out. The AMD 780M is still slightly faster than the uh, Intel Arc graphics, but it's getting really close. So those are my five computers. I actually mentioned six, but the Minis Forum UM890 is only a mention if you need Oculink. Otherwise, the Riaton Alloy 9 and the Geekom A7 are faster for gaming and just overall computing. So kind of ignore the 8 series AMD stuff. AMD, you gotta make something new to keep up with these Intels now. So let me know which one you're gonna go with. I'm curious, which one are you, if you're using one right now, let me know as well. So that's that, a whole bunch of beastly little mini PCs. I can't believe how far they've come. Uh, and I'm gonna keep looking at them for as long as I'm doing this channel, which is not gonna be too much longer, I don't think, but we'll see. Let me know what you think of all these mini PCs. Which one was your favorite? Let me know in the comments. I'll see you next time.